And welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Fragile Allegiance with me, Axion. Honestly, I don't remember what we did in the previous video. I just remember that we have a federal transport over here on Grimstroid and that we are going to start using our scout ships a bit more. Um, I've been having a bit of trouble with uh, Camtasia Studio 7, which is what I use to record this series. Um, hopefully that will resolve itself. Um, trying to figure out how to get that to work properly. But anyway, shouldn't stop me from recording this video, so as uh, Grimmett would say, let's get on with it. We'll unpause this and show our asteroid movements again. This place is building a weapons factory and it's also going to need an asteroid engine. Since we have a stray asteroid on a collision course for it. Let's see, we have our two scout ships here. And what I want these scout ships to do is go out and prospect the asteroids out here. Um, this will allow us to know what types of minerals we can find on those asteroids and uh, it can save you a bit of money if you uh, if you're short on cash and don't know where you want to colonize next. So go prospect that and I'm going to queue up a prospect on that one as well. Uh, as you can see, this red circle here is uh, showing us how far it can move, and uh, every ship you send out like this is automatically going to go back to the closest colony that you have. So we'll send you out on those missions, it'll return to Grimstroid, that being the closest colony to its uh, prospect targets. Now this one I want to prospect here and it is going to return to TNY892. I don't want it to go there, or at least not stay there, and I don't want to micromanage that later, so I'm going to give it a secondary objective to go back there, which will allow it to deliver its report faster. Um, but once it has delivered its report, it's going back to Grimstroid to refute just like that. So, our two scout Morning. ships are launching. We are getting a proximity report, which I already know about. It's okay game. Morning. And our federal transporter is telling us that it will be departing Grimstroid in 10 days. So now would be a good time to do last minute trading, selling off all those resources which we don't need. And um, if I haven't covered this before, since I don't remember everything from the previous videos, um, you don't actually get paid for it until the Federal Transport leaves your colony with the cargo of ore that you're selling. So at any time, if you change your mind, you can come back here and just unload stuff that you have designated to sell, and it'll return back to you for use in building stuff. Um, but right now, we have no need for it whatsoever. Uh, you can also go in here and see the departure time. It's seven days now. Seven days. Um, go back here. Three days. That's good enough. I don't need to go back there again. This place is building up nicely. We are building a gravity nullifier here. One thing to note about the gravity nullifier, if you build one of these on one of your colonies and later decide to build an asteroid engine on there, make sure you go in here and turn the gravity nullifier off before using the asteroid engine. Otherwise, those two are going to be constantly working against each other and that will only result in one of them blowing up. Uh, which would be rather unfortunate. You have a new message. We saw that scout ship return and now we have a JO survey for that asteroid. 
and it doesn't really have much in the way of value on it. So we're gonna leave that for now, wait for this guy to return right there. You have a new message. And we have two more geo surveys. This colony, not too good either, and that colony's not too good either. Damn. Seems that we are a bit out of luck as far as rich colonies go at the beginning of this game. But one thing we are going to do is quickly colonize this place to make sure that these two asteroids don't crash into each other. Because they're still worthwhile, just not rich. Um, we're going to have to find glory and fortune elsewhere, or fortune at least. Uh, you can right click, which will return you to your previous menu. Uh, now that I've opened the construction menu, I right click again, and the construction menu comes up again. Just something which is good to know. Let's see, this colony has started mining, and it has a bit to go, but at least we know that it has started. Uh, the stuff we have on this colony is basically all that you're going to need. Just a bit of population, make sure they have air, food and water, no radiation and enough power. A bit of mining and a storage tower. That is basically all you need for your uh, money making colonies. I want you to... Actually you can go colonize this place too. We should have enough money now that we have sold that ore uh, to be able to actually build those colonies. So now we have Grimstroid here, we have TNY892 and we have MIA348 and we are also going to colonize GWL, GLW117. And once those have been colonized, we start building them up and they are going to be mining colonies, basically, making us a bit of money. How are you coming along with... okay, seven days. Should I be worried? There's always seven days whenever I go to check. <laughs> uh, we are going to colonize this place soon enough. Now we have an engine, so Grimstroid, you get the fuck out of there. Because this one is still on the collision course. First thing we're going to build here, as soon as the colony is done, is <coughs> an asteroid engine. Warning. I know there are proximity warnings. Game. It's okay. I've got this. There's no need to worry. You have a Ooh. new message. Trader Jesse Van Der Het will be available for business in 30 days. Please select a colony for visit. Now, this is a black market trader. Black market traders are the only ones which will actually ask you for a target asteroid to visit. Um, this early in the game, it's no big deal trading with the black market. Later on, it can have a negative effect for you um, as far as your standing with the Federation and the alien races go. Jane Fong is definitely not going to be pleased with you if she finds out that you've been trading with the, the black market because they trade in ore, missiles and information and other sorts of weapons which I am sure we will have the pleasure of using and seeing soon enough. For now though, it's uh, fairly safe to uh, have him arrive at Grimstroid and do a bit of uh, trading on the side with them. One thing which is very important to note is that you should never send a black market trader to the same colony where a Federation transport is visiting, because that's a surefire way for them to uh, notice what's going on. So, just something to remember there. Okay, we have this asteroid. It 
got free radiation, and that's all I wanted to know. First things first, asteroid engine. Put it there, I don't care. Uh, radiation filters, air processors, hydrophonics plants, hydration plants, and environmental control. And then we build living space. That'll be fine. Build a pleasure dome. Build a medical center. Uh, oh god. Okay, that that works for me. Security center right there. Um, the power. So solar panels like so. So, I'm trying to get this done as quickly as possible, oops. Warning. And here we have another um, <laughs> random event. All 1000 units of surplus air on colony asteroid MIA-348 have been lost due to a pipeline rupture. That is very unfortunate considering this is a brand new colony which doesn't have an air processor. Let's just hope they can build it in time. Because people are going to start dying here. Or not. No, wait. They won't. <laughs> um, this first building actually produces a bit of the stuff. At the beginning, it will stop producing. And its production goes down continuously. <sighs> I'd forgotten about that. And <laughs> it's fortunate that it that it is that way since that happened if you forget to build life support on a on a colony um, it is eventually going to run out and that colony is going to die and now we need to go over here and do pretty much the same thing an asteroid engine and life support i didn't check how much radiation three radiation like this, and this, it gets a little monotonous, I'm sorry about that, but that's the way it goes with building strategy games like this. Uh, security center, pleasure dome for all your you pleasure needs. Message. Our black market trader has arrived, so we're going to speak with him in a bit. Security center, did I build that? Yes, I did. Okay. So, I built that. I built that. Power is going to be needed. And solar generators. Some solar panels to fill in these little tiny gaps here. Warning. Yes. Proximity warnings. That guy arrived. We don't need those two. Um, start building a storage tower as well. So, we go in here and find a trader who, oddly enough, looks kind of like me. <laughs> Not quite, but he's close. Um, we click on his portrait and we see that we have a bit of trading on our hands. This is our storage space on Grimstroid. We, have, we could actually buy ore from this guy and sell it back to the Federation. It would require me to have a bit better control or um, knowledge of the market prices to make that actually worthwhile um, but it's always a possibility like uh, you see the federation price here for selling and his price selling by butanium to him would give us a one credit profit over selling it to the federation Corillium, however, we are going to sell to him because that's almost 100 credits per unit. Uh, same with Quatsink, since that's also a good price. But that's another way of making money in this game. Cycling through this, we find Begonium, which is also a fair price. We could buy Nexus Ore from him. Uh, he wants 187,604 credits for that, and we could possibly make a profit of about 
twenty to thirty thousand um, credits per unit. If we were to do that, I'm not going to risk it right now. However, since it's the start of the game and we don't have a lot of spending money on our hands, we could also buy nuclear missiles from him. Which, since we don't have a missile silo, would be kind of a waste. They're also quite expensive. One thing we are going to buy, however, is information. Oops. Um, that just completed the trade because I accidentally right-clicked. Um, but information is information about supervisors and agents. And that information can prove very valuable. So uh, my advice to you, if you're playing this game or considering playing this game is to always buy every bit of information you can get your hands on. Now that that's done, we can start building uh, mines on our two new colonies, like so. There we go, and we're going to do the same on, on this colony. Start with a storage tower and then go for the mines. Incoming coded message from Tetracorp. And here we have the first um, supervisor available for hire. I'm not going to hire him because this early in the game I can actually handle the stress of building up new colonies. Later on it's going to be worthwhile. But I think I'm going to end this video here, and in the next episode we will uh, greet the new supervisor, check him out at least. I'm not going to hire him, like I said, but we're, we're at least going to get a bit familiar with the concept of supervisors. So, I hope to see you in the next video, and until then, remember to have fun!